Hello, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney, and uh, we have a uh, pandemic-related question. Uh, these these keep coming up. I guess I guess we have novel times, and novel times lead to uh, novel questions, right? <clears throat> Pardon me. Shouldn't shouldn't cough into the mic. That's not hygienic or polite to you, and I apologize. Um, the question goes a little something like this. So many of you may be familiar with something called the Excelsior Pass. The Excelsior Pass in New York State is uh, it's a it's a vaccine passport uh, for people to be able to prove using their cell phone that they um, that they received the vaccine for COVID, right? And I think it reflects if they've had one vaccine or two vaccines. Um, and what they're, you know, if the vaccines are, you know, I think more than two weeks old, which I think is valuable to know because if it's more than two weeks old, it's taken, I think it's, it's taken full hold or something like that. I mean, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I'm not even that bright, right? Like, so don't, don't take my word for it, but, um, that's, that's my understanding. And a bartender reached out to us and said, Hey, uh, the bar I work for in New York City is requiring the Excelsior Pass to get in. Okay, uh, that is legal. It's a private business. They're allowed to do that if they want. Uh, sporting events in New York State still require the Excelsior Pass, I believe. But most other, business, most other businesses do not. Um, there was a lot of heavy pushback from the populace. Um, they weren't too interested in a government um, vaccine passport. There was litigation. I think the ACLU got involved. Uh, I'm not. Po it, it, there's a lot. There was a lot of drama about it. Um, and I'm not going to take. You know, I'm not going to weigh in on that because I'm an employment attorney, not a civil rights attorney. Um, sure, most of what we litigate in the field of employment law, it, it's civil rights adjacent. But it's. You know, I can't. I'm not the best person to speak to what the government can and cannot do sometimes. If you're dealing with that, you're, you're probably your best bet is the ACLU, in my opinion. They get things right about 80% of the time. Sometimes they make mistakes, especially lately. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So this bar is requiring the Excelsior Pass. So bartender's like, listen, this is costing me a lot of money. The bar is not letting a bunch of regulars in. Um, the bar is not letting people without smartphones in because they, even if they're vaccinated, they can't get an Excelsior pass, I guess. And, and there, I think there's some kind of card form as well. People don't seem to be carrying that or getting that, obtaining it. So that seems like that's kind of a non-issue. It's, it's that hard copy card appears to not be working or being used in the wild by most people. So the bar is uh, costing the, the bartender a lot of tips with this policy. And it's, it's kind of worse than that. The bar has door staff, but the door staff wander off a lot. So people come in and they order, but they, don't, they haven't showed their Excelsior Pass. Then the, the door staff, the bouncer shows up like 10 minutes later after the person ordered. And it's like, hey, let me see your Excelsior Pass. And the person's like, what are you talking about? I've been here for like 15 minutes. I, I'm, I ordered food and a drink. And then, you know, the bouncer's kicking him out. <laughs> that's not great because that creates a huge amount of drama. It creates bad reviews. I think that they've tried repeatedly to make people pay for the food they ordered before kicking them out. Be like, oh, we'll box it up for you. Well, maybe I didn't want my food to go. I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, so it's creating all this drama and grief for the bartender and it's really killing uh the tips and a lot of the regulars can't get in because they're old timers i guess they don't have smartphones and a lot of um according to the bartender a lot of people who maybe can't afford smartphones but who can't afford to drink in the bar which i guess that could happen i, I don't really understand how that would happen but i'm gonna trust the bartender that that's happening um, also can't get in because they can't get smartphones or their smartphones for whatever reason. They can't figure out Excelsior Pass or whatever it is. And the bartender's question is, can they do this to me? It's costing me so much money. Yeah, I mean, to an extent, if, if you're not making enough 
to hit minimum wage, they have to pay you the difference, right? If your tips are not good enough <clears throat> that you're clocking minimum wage, and they, they're going to have to pay you up to the difference of what you were you know, making on the tip salary, which is lower than minimum wage. The, the base for tip employees is lower than minimum wage, and then the tips are supposed to get you up above minimum wage, uh, often very, very lucrative tip jobs, right? In New York City, there's a lot of bartenders clocking six figures, 150K. I, I've met waiters making more than 200K a year on tips in, in New York City, right? I, I know it for a fact, right? Um, but here, so, so when you're not actually getting enough in tips to get up to minimum wage, the employer is supposed to pay you the difference. Um, but as long as they're doing that, I mean, it is their business, right? They're allowed to do that, um, I think. Now, there's, there's issues where someone has a religious accommodation or someone can't take the vaccine because of a disability. That's a gray area. But I don't re we don't need to really touch on that in this conversation because I don't think that's really implicated very much. Um, so, yeah, I think I think they're allowed to do it. And the recourse for you is probably to to vote with your feet. You know, if this bar is not running policies in a way that you feel are good, and if they're making rules that cost you tons of money, then the good news is every single bar in New York City and most of the restaurants and bars in the country at this point are dying, just dying for staff. And 99% of them are not going to require the uh, New York State Excelsior Pass, right? I mean, New York City's at like, I think New York State's at like 70, uh, 70 plus percent vaccinated at this point. Like if you're requiring the Excelsior Pass, it's probably got more to do with some of the mental issues your owner's experiencing than with an actual desire to provide safety, right? But that's the owner's prerogative. She or he can do that. That's their right. It's their private business. And it's your right to say, I don't like what you're doing. This is harming me. This is harming my income, my bread and butter. I'm leaving. And there's a thousand, thousand places that would die to have me tomorrow. So you gotta, you gotta just make it, make it clear to them. Listen, this is not working for me. And I'm going somewhere else if you don't fix it. And if they don't fix it for you, well, I'll be rooting for you. I hope you, hope you find a job real quick. Right, that's exciting. Um, although daunting, I know. I know the job search is always daunting. I know you might have been there for a long time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to make that change, but sometimes you don't have a choice. Good luck to you, and uh, stay safe, everyone.